this is Matthew with BI Polar. In today's video, we're going to look at how you can take a query that you find in multiple data sets, turn it into a data flow entity, and then update those data sets to use the data flow instead. Let's check it out. All right. Today we're going to look at a pretty common situation. Back before we had data flows in Power BI, there wasn't really a great way to reuse the logic that defined a single table. That query could only exist in one data set at a time, so if you needed the same data and the same transformation logic, you would either need to build your own data warehouse or data mart to do the logic to do that transformation outside of Power BI, or what most people did was they would simply copy and paste their M script and reuse it in multiple data sets. With data flows, we have a better option. Let's take a look and see how we can use that as our starting point and turn it into something better. Let's see. All right, so we're gonna start off by taking a look at how this problem shows up in most solutions, most of the time that I see it anyway. Let's jump here into Power BI Desktop and we'll see uh, how our queries are set up. Now this is a very simple solution, so I created it just for this video, so uh, your examples are probably going to be a little bit more interesting or a little bit more complex. But what I've created here is a single Power BI desktop file that has a set of tables that are coming in from uh, AdventureWorks. So I've got a data flow in an existing workspace that has this data flow data that's already being pulled in. I have a country metadata table this is the interesting one because it pulls in information from the World Bank uh, public API. So we've got uh, information uh, about all of the countries in the world as uh, reported and used by the World Bank. And I have this one additional query uh, which has addresses from AdventureWorks enriched with metadata from the World Bank. Now, Nothing here is super complicated with the exception of this country metadata table. And if we take a look at the query here, the reason why this is complicated is that instead of pulling in data directly from an Excel file or a JSON file or another data source that Power BI and Power Query directly supports, this query is actually pulling in information from a zip file that in turn contains a set of CSV files. Now, a zip file isn't something that Power Query has a native connector for, but it's possible using functions that are available in Power Query's M language to unzip or uncompress a zip file. I'm gonna put a link down below uh, with the blog post from uh, our MVP, Ken Russell, so Ken actually blogged on this a couple of years ago, and it's a technique that I use all the time. The nice thing is I just take his code, copy it, paste it, and then reuse it in my data flow definitions. But here we'll see what's actually going on is that I have a URL that's referencing the World Bank download site. So they've got a whole bunch of data sets that are available for public access. I have a function that I've taken from Ken's blog post that uh, decompresses the files that are inside the zip archive. And if I scroll down here, I can then see the set of transformations that I actually created in Power Query using the UI in Power BI Desktop after having manually extracted the, the CSV files from the World Bank zip file. And once this was done, I had a one-time effort to put this all together and with both the, the unzipping from Ken's blog post and the manual transformations for these particular CSVs, I now have a single query that pulls back a table of data that I can then use for all of my solutions. So if you look at this particular solution, this is really straightforward. We've got more than one data source. We've got more than one source type. This is exactly the type of problem that Power Query excels at. The challenge comes in, what happens when I have more than one data set or more than one solution that needs a consistent view of this World Bank data? Here, I can look in my Power BI workspace and we can see the PBIX file that I've published is this World Bank and AdventureWorks data set. And 
Uh, looking in the lineage view in my workspace, I can see that I have a report downstream. I see that this data set gets some of its data from this AdventureWorks data flow that already exists inside my same workspace, and it gets its data from uh, this World Bank web source as well. So the data set gets some data from a data flow, and it gets some of the data from an external web API. But you can also see that I have another solution that uses the same data sources. So it gets some data from other entities inside AdventureWorks, and it gets some data from this web API. Now, each one of these data sets has that exact same code uh, already uh, defined for one of its tables, but this means that any time that I need to update it, any time where there's a change in logic or, or uh, there needs to be edits for maintenance, each one of these data sets will need to be independently updated. It introduces a lot of challenges around maintenance and the consistency of data. So what I want to do is I want to have this data set and this data set both updated to get the data from a single data flow, which in turn does all of the transformations from the World Bank. Let's see how we can make that happen. First of all, I'm going to say to create a new data flow, and I'm going to define new entities. Here I'm going to choose blank query, because I already have the query that I want to use. And now I will go back into my Power BI desktop file. I will right click on this country metadata and choose copy. And here I can now simply paste this in. And for consistency, I will copy the name of the query, which is automatically put in as a comment. We'll choose next. We'll put in that name and choose save and close. We'll give our data flow a name. And we will refresh it now so that our one entity is populated with data. All right, now at this point, we have a data flow that exists inside our workspace and it contains the data that this query needs. But we also have two different PBIX files that have queries that need to be updated to reference that data flow entity instead of referencing the external data source, that World Bank API directly. Let's make that change. So here we are in our first PBIX file, and I'm going to begin by choosing Power BI data flows as my source, and I will add this country metadata as a new query. Now notice that Power BI Desktop will automatically give it a name to not conflict. All I want to do is I want to right click on this and choose copy. I will then right click on the original query and choose advanced editor. And I will put in the definition of the query that references that source data flow. We'll choose done. We'll remove the uh, unneeded one that we just created. And now each of the queries that are in here that previously referenced that web API through the country metadata query, they are now referencing the, uh, the data flow instead. I'll choose close and apply. And while this PBIX file is running, I will uh, go over into the other one that needs to be updated and repeat the same steps. You'll notice this one has a V2 in the uh, title, so we will come in here and we will edit this one. We'll come in and choose Edit Queries again. For this one, since we already have the new query on the clipboard, all that we need to do is go into the Advanced Editor, paste in the definition, choose Close and Apply, and now we can come back into our first PBIX file. We'll save it. And we will publish it.
and we will also publish, save and publish our V2 PBIX file as well. Now that we've republished both of our PBIX files, let's go back into the workspace and see what difference those changes have made. Here we are back in the lineage view for our workspace, where before we had two data sets, each of which were referencing a shared data flow, and each of which were referencing this external data coming in from the, the World Bank API. Now we have a single data flow that references that external API, our existing data flow that is pulling in data from AdventureWorks, and each of our data sets is now referencing those shared data sources that are available here as data flows inside of Power BI. Now the exciting thing here is that that data transformation logic, pulling in data from the, the zip file published by the World Bank, transforming it, getting it into the shape that we need for multiple solutions, all of that logic now exists in a single location. It's not duplicated. It doesn't need to be maintained separately. And we know that it's always going to be current and consistent inside all of our solutions because that data flow has its own refresh schedule and it will pull that information in on a predictable and easily controlled basis. And all that we need to do is to have a single data flow that is defined by the query that we've already created, and then to easily update our existing queries to reference that existing data flow. I hope this was valuable. We'll see you next time.